where exactly. do we start? And what are we going to do? I think let's explain the problem context yes. first. Why do we need commands in the yeah. first place? Uh, if you look at the program now, um, we see, we, we talked about the program, right? And we talked about how the rendered user interface here is able to dispatch messages into our dispatch loop and have it handled by the update function to compute new states, right? Mm -hmm. So we, when we uh, dispatch functions, we actually, we bind the event handlers of, of UI elements and thus we are able to dispatch these, these events such as increment and decrement. So when we talk about the ability to dispatch functions, we think strictly from the user interface perspective, because the only way we are able to dispatch these messages into our Elmish program is by attaching event handlers to UI elements. Mm -hmm. But in many, many applications, UI elements are not the only place where messages originate from. Sometimes you have messages from subscriptions, such as a WebSocket, or sometimes you have messages coming from external events. So this was pretty much what we were talking about, right? Where we had this nice little circle in here and um, the, 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 v, the view was sending messages to the runtime, which was then sent to the update function and uh, which then created a whole new model, et cetera, et cetera. And then, so, and the question now is, was like in this slide here before, this, this is not really doing anything, right? So this is just a nice user interface without any actual uh, features in there. So it can't really talk to the outside world, right? So yeah, so we have the only thing we are able to do is dispatch events from just the user interface, and these events are, well, they do they they can't do much because they are being dispatched synchronously, yes. right? This is the thing about the update function; it's running synchronously. So if you look at the update back to the back to the program, so if you take a look at the dispatch function, it takes us it takes a message coming an incoming message and it takes a state and returns the new uh, next state immediately. Mm -hmm. So um, the state, the update function does not have the notion of an asynchronous update, yep. right? Uh, because state has always to be uh, synchronous and this makes, this makes a lot of things easier, right? Because um, synchronous state is a lot, the synchronous functions are simpler to think about, especially when you have events, you just think about, okay, event comes in, I have my old state, I can make a new state out of it. But when it comes to asynchronous, asynchronous updates and asynchronous operations, such as talking to, talking to a web server with HTTP yep. or just a delayed, uh, or just a delayed yep. function, then you can do that with an update function because it has to be synchronous. And the only way to do it is by using a command that breaks out of the synchronicity, yep. basically. Okay, cool. So this is basically this one here. If we if we want to have any side effects, any any HTTP request, ex yeah, all this stuff here, uh, what's written down here, yeah. we need commands to handle this stuff. So yeah. So the state function is uh, you can call it pure. It's not it's uh, it's not strictly pure because in F sharp you could do a bunch of things inside the update function, mm -hmm. but uh, when it comes to impure operations. Uh, you usually leave that out for the commands, such as making network requests and doing all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah. Okay. So what are we going to do? How are we going to start with with? Yeah. Using let's start with changing the program structure from a simple program, which which is a program that does not have any side effects, into a full Elmish program, one with commands. Yeah. But we start off with the simplest form of command, which is the, the program that doesn't do anything. It has commands, but they don't do mm -hmm. anything. So I'll start by updating this, the update function. And the update function in a full Elmish program takes uh, returns, takes the same input, a uh, message and a state, but returns a state and a command of that message. Mm -hmm. So a command of is a generic thing of a message. And when you see command, it means it is something 
that is able to dispatch that message at some point in time. It produces a message, it's, some kind of message, message. And, and one of those messages that we defined here in our discriminated union up here. So exactly. this is a command that is able to produce messages, but only those kinds of messages. Exactly. So commands are message specific and they're able to, just like when you when you call the dispatch function from your render, they're able to dispatch these messages back into the Elmish runtime, back to the dispatch loop. But uh, for now, we can go uh, with simple command.none, which is the command that doesn't do anything. So we return a tuple, yep. obviously. And there's uh, it's a choice uh, it's a choice made when implementing Elmish to make it uh, mimic the Elm architecture, the Elm language, mm -hmm. where you return the command uh, next to the state as a tuple. So we do that here as well. And a, a command.none is a command that doesn't dispatch anything. It has the ability to dispatch something of type message, but this one doesn't. Mm -hmm. So we update, uh, we, uh, now the update function has the right signature. We see here that it doesn't make sense anymore because update is has the wrong signature here. Yes. So we have to change this from make simple into make program, which expects the right type of update. Yeah. But we so also we need to forgot the, to the the init in here. So we also exactly. return a command none from the init function because we need yeah. the same in here. So yeah, because when you start the application, you can start with an initial state and an initial command. Mm -hmm. And every time you update the state, you also say, OK, what should happen mm -hmm. next? After after I updated my state, what should get triggered or what operation should be started just after my state updates? Yeah. So, and, 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 and most of the time, this one, or I think a good use case for this, what I think everyone can imagine is, is like you start your application with some loading state or you don't know the data from your server yet you, you don't know the data that you're going to display so mm -hmm. in this case you have a like initial command that is actually getting the data from some api or from the server and when it returns yeah. um, we say when the data is there then send this or disp dispatch this message into the loop and then we can handle that some data was arrived in our update function again yeah so in case you're, um, we haven't confused enough, I think let's, let's, re let, let's recap what we did yeah. here. Um, I think we went a little bit hand wavy here. The thing is we didn't change anything in the program. Mm -hmm. We just added commands that don't do anything. So the, if, we run the com uh, if we run the application as is. Shall we do this? It, yeah. Just to show you that actually nothing changed in the functionality. We just in, uh, introduced the commands in the app, in the program, but they don't do anything as of yet. All right. Okay. And we see there here go. that we have increment our increment and decrement are working properly. Yeah. Nice. So if we go back to the code, we see that we have these commands here and they don't do anything. How about we dispatch increment twice using a batch? Yeah. All right. So I will add a new message called double increment or actually increment twice. This message will return the state as is, but it will do something. And actually, I don't want to do something. I want to do two things. So I will have command dot batch, and then I will go command of message increment and command dot message increment. So let's let the button increment increment twice instead of one time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so when we start this now, we have decrement is minus one, and the increment you see here, we go like two up. So let's yeah. let's let's check what we have done in here because I think it's 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 a bit confusing yeah. at first.
Yeah, so uh, we talked. We said that a command is something that is able to dispatch something back to the dispatch mm -hmm. loop. One of the simplest commands you can have is off message. We will talk about off message in depth in a little bit, I guess. But for now, it's the simplest, uh, the simplest type of message where uh, command where it can where it just dispatches mm -hmm. uh, whatever message you give it. Mm -hmm. so it looks like it's almost doing nothing. It just uh, whatever message you you want to dispatch, it's just it just dispatches it for the next for the next cycle. So update gets called for every message, mm -hmm. and CMD of message just just dispatches this message for the next render cycle. And in this case, uh, we have two of these two of these commands, and we batch them together such that they run one after another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually, they don't wait for each other. They just run one after another. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we increment, uh, we let the commands do the uh, do the dispatching of two increments events, which then go into the increment path of the update function and actually update the state, mm -hmm. causing it to re-render. Okay, can we now actually do something? I don't know. Command of message is, is, is just like it feels we could... So, so what is the difference now to to have a, just the message increment twice? Um, that is just state count plus two, right? So it's not really. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't help that much. Yeah. Let's do something we can't do with normal update, which is uh, making async, uh, which is manipulating async operations. Mm -hmm. 